we thank the Lord for being so good to us. All the time, he has been good. Through the challenges that we go through, all the joys that we always come across, the Lord is good. And we give glory to his name. Thank you for coming. Thank you for giving me a listening ear that we may be able to enjoy the salvation that Christ has given unto us freely that we may be counter, counted as his children. Allow me just once again to recognize a friend who has come, Pastor Emmanuel Zeze Jr., you were with us last year in July, and you led us so powerfully through the stewardship week. Thank you, and may God bless you. May God be able to bless your ministry. Uh, I want us to look at this topic that we have today that is saying deeper things will unfold. You know, deeper things are not easily seen because they are not at the surface. They are deep. They are rooted. You need to look keenly. You need to search for them you will be able to find them. And when you will be able to see them, as they continue to unfold in your eyes, you will see the beauty that you have never imagined, and you will stick to it. Deeper things will unfold. Go with me to the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. Let's read verse 35 and 36. We will be able to read many verses, but we will go through them slowly. 35 and 36, John 1, 35 and 36. The Bible is saying, Again the next day, John stood with two of his disciples, that is John the Baptist. John the Baptist stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus, he walked, sorry, looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, behold, the Lamb of God. Allow me to continue till 39. Then the two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and seeing them following, said to them, what do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and see. And they came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Let me just top it there a little bit. John the Baptist is with the two disciples of his and he is seeing Jesus Christ walking. And as Jesus Christ is walking, it's like again he has seen another light on Jesus Christ that compels him to testify. And he testifies that this is the Lamb of God. 
as he had testified before in verse 29, that the previous day, just the previous day, he had seen again Jesus and testified and said that this is the lamp of God who takes away the sin of the world. And the two disciples of Jesus, something comes to their mind and they question, why this testimony? And seemingly this is not the first that we have heard. It seems that there is something more than we know. And the two disciples want to question more. And I just want to think that they might have also known what John, the revelator, is saying to us in verse 11 and 12, the same chapter, verse 11 and 12, that says, he came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. What John is saying there is that Jesus Christ came home. He came to his people. He came to the Israelites. He came to the Jews. But they did not receive him. But even though the multitude did not receive him, the remnants received him. And to the remnants who received him, he gave them the right to become the children of God. Those who will receive Jesus, you have the right to be the children of God. And you know, because of these testimonies, they are feeling that something is powerful. And uh, they want, they are questioning something and they want to get an answer. Who is this man? And that is why... John the revelator or the evangelist when testifying about this thing, about Jesus, wanting to bring to us that Jesus is God in chapter 1 and he's the one who will save us, he's again adding what John the Baptist was testifying about Jesus. And he's saying that John the Baptist also testified as the forerunner of the Savior. And that is why when he was preaching, people came to him and asking, who are you? And in verse 23 is saying, verse 23, John the Baptist is saying, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. By the way, this is a call even unto you today. Please make straight the way of the Lord. Jesus Christ is coming to save you. Accept this salvation by accepting to put away all the sin that you love. Make straight the way of the Lord because the Lord is coming. And as they are seeing that surely this is the Lord that is coming and is being testified about by now John the Baptist, the Pharisees come and they send emissaries to come and question John the Baptist and ask him, who are you? Are you Elijah? Could you be Elisha? Could you be Jonah or any other prophet? Then he says, I am none of those. Then they ask him, why do you baptize? He tells them, I am baptizing with water. But the one who is coming after me, his shoe latches, I cannot be able to unfold. Meaning that a great man is coming after him. And he's saying 
In verse 29, that verse 29, we can read it. It's saying, then the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You know, that, that is second day. After the testimonies, second day, he sees Jesus coming and he testifies. Again, the third day, as they follow each other, in verse 35, John is with the two disciples. And with these two disciples, verse 36 says, he looked at Jesus as Jesus was walking. Then John says, behold the Lamb of God. Because of that, these two disciples feel that Jesus is having something they could not be understanding. And they want to understand it. And they must know who is this man. So, they, verse 37, the Bible is saying, the two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. They just had a question in their mind that they want answered. So for the question to be answered, they decided to follow Jesus. Jesus, noticing that some, some people are following, he turns back and asks them a question. And the question is, what do you seek? What do you seek? Jesus knows that people will follow him. Many may want to follow him, but for different reasons. Many are following him that they may be able to receive miracles. Some are following him that they may be able to get jobs. Some are following that they may be able to have a table that is set before them. Some are following Jesus that they may be able to get spouses. Some are following Jesus because they have heard, this is a great man and he will be a king. Jesus wants to know why you are following him. So Jesus is asking them, what do you seek? And I'm surprised at the answer. They don't go straight to the answer that, Lord, we want to know you. They are telling Jesus something. In verse 38, they are telling him, Rabbi, where are you staying? What they are telling Jesus is that, Lord, teacher, what we want to understand from you, we can't tell you now. We want to stay with you. Tell us where you stay. We want to spend time with you. Time, little time with you is not enough. Give us time that we may spend time with you, that we may be able to understand your beauty. Jesus understands their heart and tells them, come and see. I cannot be able to explain to you, if you have decided to understand me, to be with me, don't hesitate. Come and see. There is some beauty in me. There is some beauty of heaven that you can be able to understand. 
And you cannot be prevented from knowing. If you want to know, come and see. And when you come and see, deeper things will unfold. And uh, as they come with him, they stayed with him that whole day. They were yearning to be with Jesus. They were ready to be with their master. This is what I was inviting you to get this day. That the moment you understand your Savior Jesus Christ, you will see a deeper beauty that you will never move away from him. There is some beauty in Jesus Christ that you cannot just see at the face of it. You must take time with Jesus. You must have a deeper experience with Jesus and you will see a strange beauty that you will love Jesus Christ. These two disciples, one is mentioned that one was Andrew. We will sit down there. Another one is not mentioned, but scholars agree that the other disciples who was not mentioned there is John the evangelist, or John the revelator. Most of the time when he's writing in the book of John, he doesn't mention himself. So John loved Jesus and Andrew. They were first disciples of John the Baptist. And they want to find out more about Jesus. They want to have a deeper experience with Jesus. That deeper experience changes life. Do you know if you have that experience, the immoral life that you always love, you will just feel that it is not a good one and you will change it. Do you know if you have such an experience with Jesus because you are very close to him? Do you know some of the clothes that you wear, you will just find that they don't fit in with the new relationship that you have developed with this man, Jesus Christ. May I ask... Uh, that we can see the stanza of the song that we have just seen. Song number 290 is saying that, turn your eyes upon Jesus. I just need the chorus. And if we may, we are not going to sing it, but I just want us to see the writing of it, how the writing of that chorus of it, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Song 290 the chorus, it's, it is nice. It is saying, we do slowly. We don't hurry with the word of God. It is saying, turn your eyes upon Jesus, meaning that you might have been looking this way. Turn and look upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. Helen, Helen Howard, who wrote this song, this lady had been a good Christian since her childhood in a Christian family. But she met an evangelist who turned her thinking and she thought of writing this song in England. And she says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Keenly look at line two. Look full in his wonderful face. Jesus is wonderful. But 
Continue looking at that face until you see something that is glorious. Then the third line is saying, when you look at Jesus like that, the things of earth will grow. That word strangely, I like it. Will grow strangely deep in the light of his glory and grace. What that statement meant to me is that whatever you ever loved on earth, they seem to be so nice, so beautiful, so glorious. By the way, when you are sinning, you always feel that you are on top of everyone. By the way, when you have money, sometimes you can be crazy. When you have good education, sometimes it can be very important to you. When you have a beautiful wife, it can be something to be excited about. But she's saying that when you look at the countenance of Jesus, those things will grow strangely dim. You don't know how your heart has changed that the sin you used to love has become something very hateful. This is what Andrew and John is looking for. That you may come so close with Jesus until you feel that the sin you are doing is so bad. And you become so close to Jesus till you feel that even the problems you are going through, whether it is sickness, whether it is singleness, whether it is poverty, you realize that they are nothing before Christ. They become so minute because you have seen his glory. Verse 41. Let's see from verse 40. One of the two who had John speak and followed him was Andrew. He is the one who is mentioned. So it is Andrew and John, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah. If you want me to say it, let me say. With such an experience that they spent with Jesus that day, they were convinced. You don't need to doubt. You just say it straight. We have found the Messiah. And his brother Simon is convicted and he comes. Verse 42, and he brought him to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, he said, you are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, meaning stone. That verse 42, I just question, when did Jesus get to know his name? He has just been brought by Andrew, the brother. Immediately he comes, Jesus says, you are Simon, son of Jonah. You know when he tells me that you are Meshach, son of Amayo, 
I would ask myself, you know, he has known my name until he has known my father. Then there must be something more than that. He must even be understanding the poverty that is in our place. He must be understanding the sickness that is in my place. He must be understanding the needs in my place. No wonder he could say, me, you can crucify me upside down. The following day, verse 43, I don't know whether now this is the fourth day in this, in this chapter. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee and found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Verse 46, And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. He called Philip. Philip knew about Nathaniel and he knew where Nathaniel could be found. So straight he goes to the place where Nathaniel can be found. Because there was something he knew Nathaniel always wanted. That is why he's going for him. And as he goes for Nathaniel, Nathaniel enjoys the statement, you have been reading the law. That is Genesis to Deuteronomy. And he tells them, he tells him, we have found him. As we are going to read the next verses, they are telling us that he was under the fig tree. Fig tree was a place of meditating upon this word. Let me say it was a place of meditating about the Pentateuch and the prophets. And if somebody was meditating, you could just say the person is under the fig tree. So Nathaniel was under the fig tree. And he was waiting to, his desire was to see the Messiah. And good news comes that we have found him. You know something you are seeking and it has been found? It was a nice message to Nathaniel. But something comes in that we expected something greater. But how comes that something greater can become, can come from Nazareth. The writer, great writer in the early days, Josephus, wrote about 200 cities and villages that were found in Galilee. Nazareth is not one of them. If it cannot be among 200 that can be mentioned, it means that it was too minute to be mentioned. We waited for something powerful. How comes it can come from Nazareth? We were waiting for Jesus who can be able to do to us great miracles. How comes I have believed in Jesus and still the things I'm praying for, they are coming small, small. Some are never coming at all. We waited for pomp and power and we are not seeing it. Philip feeling that it is not something that he can argue out. By the way, the beauty of Jesus Christ, I cannot argue it out with you. I cannot tell you what Jesus Christ can do unto you. 
I cannot in my own words tell you the glory that is there. The only answer to you, please come and see. The beauty that is in Jesus Christ, I cannot express to you. Even in all your disappointments, you may not understand that beauty. But if you are willing to understand, please come and be closer to Jesus. Look carefully upon his countenance. And you will realize that there is a beauty, there is a glory you have never known. And the great things of the world that you ever used to, to know, they will grow strangely dim. The sins that you commit and you feel you are powerful, you will find that they grow strangely dim. Nathaniel goes to Jesus Christ and when he goes to Jesus in verse 46 47 Jesus saw Nathaniel coming towards him toward him and said to him, said of him, Behold an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. When you are searching for salvation, you are searching for the Messiah, and you are reading the prophets to understand me, I saw your heart wanting to understand me. When you are still deep in sin, and you are saying this sin always bring me problems in my family. And I wanted somebody who can break the chains. Jesus is saying that when you are crying for someone who can take you away from your sin, I saw you. When you are crying for someone who can be able to deliver you, I saw you. Then Nathaniel testifies and says, in verse 49, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Then verse 50, Jesus says, Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree do you believe you will see greater things than this? Just because I have told you that I understand your life, you have believed. Just because I have told you that I understand you, you believe me. Just because of the simple, simple miracles I have done to you, you confess that you believe. Let me confirm to you that when you come much closer unto me and stay with me and understand me, you will see greater things. The things that have been painful to you in your life and you have been questioning why they are not going, you will understand the reason. The beauty of heaven that you will see when you, your eyes will be unveiled and you will see the things that we have never seen, ears have never heard, you will realize 
that there are much more greater things than these small things of earth that you love. This seed that you cherish that will make you never to see heaven. If only you knew that you could come closer to Jesus and you will see the beauty of heaven until the beauty of that sin will be strangely dim. Jesus is telling you, just come closer. Stay with me and see the beauty. That is why I'm telling you, come closer to Jesus and the deeper things will unfold. You know, deeper things means that the love of God is too deep just to see it here. Stay with Jesus and understand the depth of his love. His grace is so wide that you can't just see it. Come closer to Jesus and study his word and you will understand this man. That is why as I finish, I will refer you to song 245 more about Jesus. Stanza 3, we read stanza 3 before I make a call and we sing it. I'm going to make a call. And uh, what I wanted to tell you is that this, this month of February, we have a theme for the February saying, beyond all limits in studying the word of God. Go beyond all limits to study this word. You will find yourself closer to Jesus. Stanza three of more, more about Jesus, that song, song 245 is saying, more about Jesus in his word, holding communion with my Lord. I want to be holding communion with my Lord. And then I hear his voice in every line. If I hold communion with him, and I want to hear his voice in every line, then I make each and every faithful saying to be mine. I pray, who among us is saying, I want the things of the earth before me to grow, strangely dim, that I may be much closer to Jesus. Can I see you? Please rise up.